Okay, we're at uh, 36.3, uh, but we before we uh, uh, go on, I'm going to uh, make sure that I want to make sure that everybody understands what these different modes are. Um, you know, so we're, we're going to assume that what they're talking about here is, is centered so that uh, for the, the brights, uh, we'll have the brights and the darks over here. Uh, this is uh, M equals zero. Of course, this is M equals one, M equals uh, two. This is M equals minus one. Oh, I, it looks like a two. Uh, M equals minus one, M equals minus two. And so if we have a, uh, the uh, plus or minus one half, this, this would be uh, M equals one half, uh, M equals one and one half, uh, M equals uh, two and one half. And over here, of course, uh, uh, M equals minus one half, M equals uh, minus one and one half, uh, M equals minus two and one half. Just wanted to make sure that, that everybody understands what these modes are and what they're pointing to. Uh, sorry if my, my handwriting isn't that clear, but I think you get the idea. Uh, now let's get back to the, uh, the PowerPoint, uh, which is right here. And it's the same, it's the same image. I, I just, I can't write on this with, uh, uh, I can do it on my iPad, not on, um, on this, so this is what the uh, uh, the, uh, the the image looks like. And note that the uh, edges of the uh, the bright fringes uh, in the figure they're not sharp. There's gradual change from bright to dark, and so we consider the distribution of the light intensity associated with the double slit and interference pattern in this section. Um, so the intensity is equal to the maximum intensity, I max, times the cosine squared of uh, pi d sine theta over lambda, where lambda is the wavelength. Uh, now for small angles, uh, I equals I max cosine squared uh, theta d uh, over lambda l times y. If we if you go back, there, uh, uh, we saw the y over, I think we, uh, uh, we saw the, uh, uh, I think we may have seen the L over y for tangent theta, uh, but it, for small angles, tangent theta and sine theta are the same. Um, so this is uh, the diffraction grading. Um, and these are the, uh, for any value of N, the decrease in intensity in maxima to the left and right of the central maximum indicated by the blue dashed arcs is due to the diffraction patterns from the individual slits, which are discussed in chapter 37. Um, so it's not part of this. So um, we see a, a primary maximum and a secondary maximum. And you can see as N increases, you get these uh, many more secondary maximums here. It just looks like a broad line for N equal 10, but you can see there's a, a lot of different um, uh, secondary uh, maximums. Um, so let's see, is that, I think that's all there is to uh, discuss about this. Now, using the figure as a model, sketch the interference pattern from six slits. Well, he, he, they jump from five to 10. So it's gonna look, it's gonna look a little bit like five, a little bit greater. There are, there's gonna be more of these bumps uh, here. Uh, you know, so we so we've seen one bump, two bumps, three bumps. So there's going to be four bumps for the n equal uh, six. And sure enough, that you can see one, two, three, four. Uh, this is what the uh, the six slits uh, look like. And and that's the end of the thirty six uh, three. It's just the intensity, the the the. Uh, we won't, I don't even think I assign a homework problem with this, but it's here it is the I equals I max a cosine squared of uh, pi D sine theta over lambda or 
for very small angles, pi d over lambda l times y. Um, okay.